And I'd like to welcome Vanessa Costa, Chair of CCHI. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you, Jorge. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, it's wonderful to see 773 of our closest friends in one virtual room uh, and to see that you're joining from all over the U.S. and all over the world. Uh, folks who know me know that my heart is in Massachusetts, my home is in Florida, but today I'm joining you from Porto de Galinhas, Pernambuco, Brazil. I want to see what the ASL interpreters do with that one. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, on behalf of CCHI, I'm thrilled to welcome you to this virtual interpreter skill building mini conference themed Practice Makes Competent. Uh, this day long event offers interpreters a special opportunity not only to gain insights from esteemed leaders in the healthcare interpreting field, but also to engage in real time performance based practice during each session. Interpreters certified by CCHI may earn up to 100% of the performance-based CE hours required for certification renewal just today. How exciting to be here with you right here and right now. Thank you so much for joining us. While most of us here today are nationally certified healthcare interpreters, many are still working towards that goal, and that's wonderful. CCHI's certification program is intended for a healthcare interpreter of any language at an entry-level position, defined more specifically as a person who is able to perform the functions of a healthcare interpreter competently, independently, and unsupervised in any setting and in any modality where healthcare is provided with the knowledge, skill, and ability required to relay messages accurately from a source language to a target language in a culturally competent manner and in accordance with established ethical standards. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot to take in. Uh, reading this description, and we do have it here on screen, are you thinking of yourself today? Or do you see the interpreter you once were? Or do you envision some future version of yourself? At the beginning of my interpreter career, around 2000, I didn't have a car, so I mostly accepted assignments from a local agency along a local train line. Most of my assignments at that time were at an eye and ear infirmary. Uh, after about a year, I was great at interpreting for eyes and ears, but not so much for the rest of the body. And I realized that I needed to make a change. I needed to branch out uh, to deliberately seek out new experiences. So I bought a car and that allowed me to accept a wider range of assignments and not just on the local train line. Later, I realized I needed more experiences. And so I applied for an interpreter position at a local public health system offering a variety of care services. No matter where we are in our healthcare interpreting career, it's important to periodically make time for self-reflections in competence. Why not ask yourself, Am I regularly engaging in any setting and in any modality? Or have I settled comfortably into a smaller scope of practice? Whether newly certified or entering your fourth renewal cycle, regular deliberate practice is foundational to maintaining, strengthening, and extending the reach and range of our skills. The concept that practice makes confident applies to all professions, including health professions. In the fast evolving field of healthcare, continuous improvement is paramount. Uh, Bud Wilkinson, who was an athlete, coach, broadcaster, and politician, uh, he said, Rome was not built in a day. Instant success is never possible. Competence results only from sustained, consistent, self disciplined effort over an extended period of time. So, in this talk, we'll first consider the importance of deliberate practice in all professions and then articulate specific ways in which healthcare interpreters can adapt models from other health professions for refining and sharpening our skills through self-study, through instructor-led practice, and through peer feedback, not just when we enter the field or in the early stages of our career, but throughout the lifetime of our career, throughout the whole trajectory. Now, simply doing something over and over again does not lead to confidence. Uh, in fact, practicing the wrong things can lead to deeply entrenched bad habits and maybe even a loss of skills that had previously been developed. The only type of practice that leads to sustained and progressive improvement is called deliberate practice. 
uh, popularized in the 1990s by psychologist Anders Ericsson and colleagues, deliberate practice is defined as individualized training specifically designed by a coach or teacher to improve specific aspects of an individual's performance through repetition and refinement. So deliberate practice involves two kinds of learning, improving on the skills we already have and extending the reach and range of our skills. So you might ask, how much practice does it take to reach mastery in any skill? Well, studies of human performance in fields as diverse as music, sports, surgery, and mathematics have shown that attainment of an expert level or master level of performance requires about 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. 10,000 hours. How long does it take to accrue 10,000 hours of deliberate practice? Well, working 40 hours a week for 48 weeks a year, because we do need to take time off, the 10,000 hour mark is reached in about six years, provided all of those hours are in deliberate practice. Interestingly, Erickson and colleagues define deliberate practice as highly structured activity, the explicit goal of which is to improve performance. Are learning and performance improvement the main goal of an interpreter's daily work, or are they a byproduct of service-related tasks? If you look at it from that perspective, we might conclude that just working as an interpreter, even for six years, is not the same as engaging in 10,000 hours of deliberate practice with a performance improvement goal. Now, another number that appears, the slides are a little bit off here. <laughs> uh, it appears across disciplines, five hours. Uh, from musicians to athletes, top performers spend an average of five hours daily in deliberate practice. Any more than that, and concentration and performance levels drop off, and diminishing returns are received from the time invested. In real life, interpreter development involves a mix mixture of education and service. But suppose an interpreter is fully engaged in deliberate practice of relevant skills five hours a day, five days a week. How long until the magic 10,000 hour mark is attained? About 10 years, 10 years. Now, you may have read that some experts don't believe in the 10,000 hour mark. Uh, they say it's a myth. Uh, our individual genetic makeup, when we start and how we learn, these things all combine to determine how many hours it will actually take for each one of us individually to master a specific skill, or even if mastery is possible at all. Uh, consider the research of master chess players by cognitive psychologists Gobey and Campitelli. They found that there were huge differences in the number of hours of practice it took chess players to reach a specific skill level. The number of hours to reach the, that master level ranged from 728 to 16,120, meaning that some players needed 22 times more practice than others to reach the same skill level, 22 times more. So rather than focus on a specific number of hours, it might make sense to place greater emphasis on the quality of our practice and on the personalization of a competence development plan. As healthcare interpreters, it's easy to settle comfortably into a limited scope of practice. Uh, sometimes we choose this, uh, sometimes circumstances maybe beyond our control create the environment for this to happen. And sometimes we might not even be aware that it's happening to us. Uh, for 13 years, I worked in a language access program at a public safety net hospital. Uh, as Jorge mentioned in the introduction, 43% of our patients required interpreter services. And we built up a team of about 100 interpreters working around the clock in three hospitals in a dedicated call center in 15 languages. Now, those 15 languages didn't all have the same volume. Uh, our busiest languages were Portuguese and then Spanish and Haitian Creole. A Portuguese interpreter, a Spanish interpreter, or a Haitian interpreter in our health system was going to be busy day in and day out. Uh, in a typical ship, they would have the opportunity to interpret for many different encounter types, ambulatory, emergency, inpatient. So you think that a full-time hospital staff interpreter working in a major local language would have experienced just about everything, right? Well, I thought so too, until one day, a staff interpreter stumbled into my office. He was wide-eyed, he was awestruck, and he said to me, 
after 10 years at this hospital, I got called to interpret my first C-section. Perhaps because he was a male on a primarily female team, perhaps because he preferred remote modalities and spent more time on the phones and on video than in person, or maybe because he worked second shift, uh, those things may have combined to create the circumstances for him to work full time for 10 years and never enter the OR. Uh, that assignment caught him by surprise and it really opened new doors for him. And it opened his eyes and mind to the fact that we just don't know what we don't know. Uh, more specifically, we don't know what we don't seek out. So let's keep seeking out new experiences in our healthcare interpreting work. Let's be deliberate about growing our knowledge and expanding our skill sets. Now, Michael Gell, author and executive coach, he teaches that by stretching yourself beyond your perceived level of confidence, you accelerate your development of competence. If certification marks the beginning or early stage of a professional healthcare interpreting career, what comes next? How can we stretch? How can we maintain our baselines while accelerating the development of our confidence towards mastery? In the next few minutes, we'll take a deeper dive into the concepts of deliberate practice and relentless improvement in healthcare. And we'll consider a blueprint for charting a personal path from competence to mastery as healthcare interpreters. We'll outline some concrete steps that when followed really do help us to continuously grow our knowledge and refine our skills, ensuring that we consistently provide the highest quality interpretation in diverse healthcare settings. Finally, we'll take a look at how a personal commitment to relentless improvement not only benefits interpreters, but also contributes and to advancement in the communities in which they live and work. Now, the healthcare industry is constantly evolving with new medical knowledge and technologies. Self-study, including reading journals, completing online learning modules, and staying updated with medical literature, all of these things help healthcare professionals keep pace with the changes in their fields. Healthcare professionals of all disciplines need to regularly refine and deepen their understanding of specific areas. Uh, Self-study is crucial for acquiring specialized knowledge, whether it's in diagnostics, treatment methods, or emerging trends. Self-study also ensures that professionals are up to date with the latest ethical considerations and guidelines. Now, I don't know how it's been for you, but for me, the past three years have been a bit of a blur. Uh, working in a hospital for the first two years of the pandemic, in a COVID hotspot, my focus was on patient care and on keeping healthy with my family at home and with my colleagues and friends out in the community. Uh, I, I wasn't thinking much or reading much beyond the latest daily COVID updates. And so I almost missed a very important development in healthcare interpreter ethics. A white paper published by the National Council on Interpreting in Healthcare that provided clarification on advocacy. You might not have had the opportunity to read it when it came out in 2021, but make it a point to read it this weekend or to view the free webinar presented by its authors. It's CE approved and available at ncihc.org and it can refine your practice. Now, speaking of practice, knowledge building is one thing, but skill building practice is quite another. How can a healthcare interpreter build skills on their own? Well, there are many tools available today, including online simulation, recording and playback, and rubrics for self-assessment, and for use in assessing recordings of other interpreters' renditions as a solo practice activity. To accelerate your path from competence to mastery, seek out incrementally more complex tests for practice interpretation and site translation. This will boost your medical language proficiency in all of your working languages and improve the flow of your communication. Practice note-taking as a foundational skill and refine your note-taking techniques for consecutive, long consecutive, and even simultaneous interpretation. Some of the newly published tools for solo practice are really exciting. Uh, last year, Blue Horizon Interpreter Training Online offered, offered a free webinar the Remote Interpreter, How to Use a Self-Evaluation Tool for Independent and Peer-Supported Evaluation. 
Uh, this webinar introduced a brand new tool based on years of remote interpreting performance by spoken and sign language interpreters. The webinar recording is available for free online and you can watch it today, but please not until after the mini conference. There are so many tools for structured solo practice and self-evaluation available now. Make it a part of your personal or professional competence development plan to become familiar with them and try them out in deliberate practice and also as part of the debriefing process after challenging real life encounters. You can find that tool at interpretertrainingonline.com. So we've talked about practicing on our own. What about instructor-led practice in peer evaluation? You know, regular deliberate self-study and solo practice are essential, but working alone is just not enough because we all have our blind spots. It's been said that you can't become fully self-aware without help from others. Medical professionals, including doctors and nurses, they undergo rigorous residency programs and clinical rotations under the supervision of experienced mentors. These programs provide hands-on experience and exposure to diverse patient cases. Many healthcare professions require practitioners to engage in continuing education or CE activities. These often include instructor-led workshops, seminars, and conferences, all of which provide opportunities for skill enhancement and knowledge exchange. Learning together is learning better. Periodic in-service trainings focus on honing specific skills and developing best practices. So that's healthcare professions in general. What about healthcare interpreters? Well, we too can seek out internships, supervise practice opportunities with an experienced preceptor or mentor, and performance-based CE activities, in-service skill building, and peer-to-peer -peer evaluation. Ask yourself, in the past three months, have I engaged in formal instructor-led practice? Have I invited an instructor, a supervisor, a colleague, or another experienced interpreter to listen to and observe my work? Whether in simulation or in a real life encounter where permitted, that feedback can really accelerate our, our, our movement from competence to mastery. Are we open to constructive criticism and suggestions for improvement? Regularly and deliberately seeking feedback from instructors and peers will accelerate our growth. And when choosing a CE program, don't just pick the shortest or the easiest or the cheapest module. I, I know it's, it's tempting, but be intentional and be relentless about expanding beyond what you already know and beyond what you already do well. Now, doctors, nurses, social workers, and other healthcare professionals regularly engage in case discussions with peers. Uh, these sessions encourage the exchange of insights, best practices, and problem-solving techniques. Uh, collaboration between different health professions is vital for comprehensive patient care. Interprofessional teams can foster a culture of peer feedback, encouraging mutual learning and improvement. If you work within a healthcare system, seek out opportunities to attend the Grand Rounds and the Schwartz Rounds and offer support for interdepartmental performance improvement projects. Interdisciplinary teams sometimes engage in research and publication. It's always very exciting to see the CHI, core CHI, and core CHI P credentials attached to the name of research publication authors. Our being visible as interpreters, having a seat at the table, and contributing to community conversations within a healthcare system, these things help providers and support staff to view us as essential and as valuable members of the care team. But what if you're freelance? Uh, what if you work remotely for a language service vendor? You can still seek out opportunities to engage in virtual or hybrid interdisciplinary events or to attend public events at your local hospital. In 2020, CCHI presented on how interpreters can utilize methods from other health professions uh, to prepare and present critical incidents for public consideration, similar to the Grand Rounds and the Schwartz Rounds models. You can watch that recording on the CCHI YouTube channel and visit the Critical Incidents Repository and the Virtual Interpreter Rounds pages at cchicertification.org. Our field of healthcare interpreting is changing at a very fast pace. 
Uh, for example, the situations in which simultaneous interpreting is used are more and more varied now. Uh, simul is not just for group sessions or for an emotional patient or for a behavioral health patient who can't pause. Some healthcare systems routinely offer simultaneous interpreting as one of several language assistance options routinely available to patients and care teams. Are we actively building simul skills? Are we seeking out opportunities to practice with the equipment used for simul in healthcare settings, both in person and remote? Are you engaging providers and patients in meaningful dialogue about their experiences with this modality and with the different technologies? And I wanna pause there and reflect, you know, really how can we speak from a place of knowledge about anything that we haven't yet experienced personally? So let's actively seek out new experiences in healthcare interpreting. Starting today with Elena Langdon's presentation, decollage is not a dirty word, Simultaneous interpreting for healthcare interpreters. That's coming up next after the break, and it's a must see. So, we've referred to a competence development plan at several points in this talk. But what is that exactly? A competence development plan is a written plan, it's a professional learning action plan designed to improve immediate performance and foster readiness for long term career goals. This personal action plan can help us move progressively from competence to mastery. Now, the concept of the competence development plan didn't originate in the world of healthcare interpreting. Its principles can be adapted to many different professions, lifestyles, and sets of priorities. Course management provides a free guide to drafting a competence development plan. And although it is a written plan, the process doesn't involve extensive writing. Uh, the guide includes simple templates like the one you see on screen uh, that will help you to organize your goal setting around specific skill development. So for each competency or skill that you want to master, ask yourself, is this an area for general improvement or am I in need of critical development? Uh, is refining the skill important and urgent, important but not urgent, or just optional? And finally, how is it aligned with my career goals? Uh, answering these questions first will help you prioritize the skills that you want to develop. Now, once you have your priorities out, these planned, your measures of success or how you know that you'll be successful or that you're making progress, um, Identify stakeholders that might support you, like coaches, mentors, or supporters. Uh, list the potential obstacles that might get in your way. Uh, and, and then finally, set a target completion date. Revisit. Be deliberate about your practice and approach it with a spirit of relentless improvement. Now, for most of us, healthcare interpreting is not just a job. Uh, for some of us, it's a vocation. That's how we feel about it. Uh, for all of us, it's a profession. And as professionals, we must regularly invest in professional development. Uh, this requires investments of time, investments of effort, and yes, even investments of money are required. Uh, a competence development plan goes hand in hand with a professional development budget. And it can be difficult to talk about a professional development budget. Uh, healthcare interpreters don't typically make a lot of money. Uh, and while staff interpreters in large healthcare systems often enjoy benefits like tuition reimbursement, some have encountered a system that doesn't cover the cost of education if that course doesn't carry college credit. Uh, freelance interpreters and those working remotely for language service companies might be wholly responsible for covering their own continuing education out of pocket. That's really a challenge. Uh, most of us are on budgets, limited budgets, and on heads of, as heads of household, or maybe even supporting multiple households in multiple countries, we aren't always able to prioritize ourselves in the family budget. So what can help us with our professional development? Well, stakeholder organizations like the National Council on Interpreting and Healthcare, interpreter associations, and interpreter certification bodies like CCHI all provide free or low-cost continuing education opportunities to members, uh, to certificates, and sometimes even to the general interpreter public, like this event today. 
there is really no shortage of affordable online hybrid and in-person learning events anymore. And many of them do carry C CCHI uh, CE accreditation. And if your professional development budget is a little bit higher, uh, consider joining uh, an association like the American Translators Association or attending its annual conference. Uh, throughout my career, I've enjoyed attending the ATA conference whenever possible, and I've made it a point to do so whenever it's hosted in a city near me. Uh, and remember, presenters often have more opportunities to attend in-person events at a lower cost. Uh, submitting a abstract and being accepted as a presenter at a conference could save you hundreds of dollars in registration fees, and at the same time, open the opportunity for you to benefit from dozens of other presentations by other presenters at a multi-day conference. So think of presenting, and that might be a way uh, to achieve your CEs and to continue to learn and grow each year. Uh, remember too, that it is possible for you to develop a workshop or seminar alone or with a colleague uh, and offer it online or in person, perhaps in connection with your local interpreter association and receive CEs as a presenter. Let's view the CE requirements associated with maintaining certification, not as a burden, but as unique opportunities to press forward from competence to NOSI. Now, today we have a, a really um, interesting conference uh, Jorge took us through it earlier. Uh, we saw the lineup. It's really fantastic. Uh, today's mini conference is a wonderful opportunity to engage in instructor led performance based continuing education with some of healthcare interpreting's leading trainers, uh, with language specific workshops in Arabic, ASL, Mandarin, Spanish, as well as two plenary sessions and a fascinating workshop by Sarah Stockler Rex on training your ear to understand varieties of US and international English. In just one day, you'll receive all the PB credit needed for an entire certification renewal. But don't stop here. Make it a part of your competence development plan to engage in performance-based training every year. Uh, if you interpret in any language other than Spanish, it's likely that the performance-based training opportunities are fewer and farther between. So be deliberate about in attending everything you can that's offered for your working languages and be relentless about making the most of language neutral performance-based skill building opportunities. Now we've talked about CEs and certification renewal. Uh, if you aren't yet certified, why not start the process today? Uh, information about I, core CHI performance. Um, th this information is on the CCHI website. Uh, the paths are outlined clearly along with the prerequisites and the eligibility criteria. Uh, there are study guides and practice materials. Keep up with the CE requirements, submit your renewal applications on time, and consider volunteering as a subject matter expert that will allow you to participate and learn about certification from the inside while also earning CE credit. Is certification a declaration of eternal competence? No, not at all. Is it a snapshot of entry-level competence at a specific point in time? Well, yes. Uh, and we've established that competence is not an endpoint, nor are we ever finished. Uh, if we don't move forward, eventually we will fall behind. So keep pushing forward towards mastery. Who knows, you may someday be the first advanced practice practitioner uh, in a new age of language access. Uh, imagine that in APCHI, uh, the possibilities really are endless. Now we're talking about pushing and pushing and pushing. Let's take a moment to think about self-care. Uh, relentless does not mean restless, not in the literal sense. Uh, a study of top performing violinists revealed that while they did practice more than others, they were also more likely to take naps during the day and get a statistically significant greater amount of sleep. So while an interpreter can't sleep on the job per se, uh, deliberate rest is as important as deliberate practice. Uh, ensuring adequate rest and recovery time is a part of building competence, and it's essential in pushing forward towards mastery. And if you have an opportunity, uh, read the reference article here. It's called The 10,000-Hour Rule in Residency Training, 
and it is really very interesting. If you take a snapshot of this page, um, you can link to it. it. It talks about the importance of rest for medical residents as well, and really for all healthcare practitioners, and how if we do rest as we practice, our performance does accelerate and our mastery uh, does, does firm up more quickly. Uh, so take care of ourselves uh, while we're also learning uh, relentlessly. So why the effort towards mastery? There are benefits to the interpreter as an individual and also to the communities where they live and work. For individual interpreters, deliberate practice and a spirit of relentless improvement ensures accuracy and precision. It enhances effectiveness. It boosts confidence and credibility. It increases earning potential and higher ability. It opens doors to exciting new opportunities. And it instills in us a, a true professional pride, which is really a powerful unifying force. I see the hearts coming up when I talk about professional pride. This is something we feel deep down. Now, what are the community benefits? Well, when interpreters individually and as a profession push forward towards mastery, there are tangible benefits to the communities. Uh, these include a better care experience, uh, better patient outcomes, sustainable advances in health equity, and an elevation of the healthcare interpreting profession in the public eye. In an immigrant community, where sometimes in the same family there are various levels of language proficiency in different languages, uh, patients and, and their family members, they're not just going to accept that we are providing high quality interpretation because we say we are, uh, they're listening to us. Uh, they're listening for accuracy. They're listening to hear their voices reflected. They're comparing us to each other. Uh, they're comparing us to ad hoc interpreters, to themselves, and also to the AI tools that are now accessible. Their experiences with interpreters, while subjective, really can determine the public perception of our work and perhaps even the future of our profession. So looking forward to the future, what's next? Well, what's next for today is for everyone to enjoy the CCHI Virtual Interpreter Skill Building Mini Conference and make each, let each of us make today a new starting point in our professional journey from competence to mastery through deliberate practice and relentless improvement. Thank you.